Good morning, everyone. It's Annie with Manor Farms Homestead. So this morning, I'm getting started with getting some eggs in the incubator. It's that time of year, and everyone's interested in chickens, laying hens, biddies, hatching eggs. So we're going to do a little short video series on actually incubating eggs, candling the eggs along the way, and the initial care of the chicks right after they hatch. So we're gonna get started today. I've got about 48 eggs down here that I've collected over several days. And I'm just gonna show you how I have them set up in this tray. What I have here um, are some eggs that I gathered over the past couple of days. Now this time of year, my hens don't lay that well. And optimal fertility on most of your hatching eggs is not going to be until late March, early April. So throughout the course of this video, I'll be showing you how to candle the eggs throughout the incubation process. That gives you the opportunity to pull out any eggs that are not fertile or if they were fertile at some point stopped developing. Um, that's going to be important so you don't end up with any eggs exploding towards the end of your incubation period. Um, for the eggs, you want to make sure you get them into the incubator within seven days of them being laid. Technically, you can go a little bit longer, but seven is optimal to have um, the best chance at fertility and producing an actual chick from the egg. So we're gonna be adding a few more eggs to the tray. You always wanna put small point down. If you're storing your eggs for up to a week before putting them in the incubator, make sure you rotate your eggs a couple of times a day so they can tilt that way early in the day swap them around tilting that direction later just so that your egg your yolk doesn't kind of glue to the eggshell you'll see some of the eggs are dirty this is perfectly fine don't wash your eggs before incubating them I've had really dirty eggs hatch a chick just fine before some of these eggs get dirty because the hens choose not to lay them in the nest And I plan to try to candle these at least once a week, maybe a little more just for sake of the video. The more you handle your eggs and take them out of the incubator and candle them, the lower your fertility and final hatch rate will be. Uh, but for educational purposes of this video, if we lose some fertility, lose some hatch rate, that's okay. Um, we have plenty more eggs that we'll be able to hatch later this spring. So starting off very basic here, just to encompass everyone that might just be starting with chickens. When you are trying to hatch eggs, it's important to know that your eggs are fertile. So wherever you sourced your eggs from needs to have a rooster or your eggs are not gonna hatch. I get the question a lot of times, do I need a rooster for my hens to lay eggs? Hens will lay eggs without a rooster. They're just not gonna be fertilized. And if you ever want to hatch eggs, they do need to come from hens that have been exposed to a rooster. So keep that in mind before you stock up eggs in your incubator trying to hatch them. Now, most incubators are equipped with an automatic turner. Mine is, if you have an incubator that does not have an automatic turner, you're going to have to turn your eggs at least once a day, maybe two times a day for optimal chick development. So we're gonna go ahead and get this set up. I've just turned it on. We're gonna get all our settings where we want them to be. All right, I've got my temperature set at 100 degrees. That's perfect. So now it's asking about the humidity and it looks like it's set to 45. We're gonna drop this down to about 35. That should be fine for right now. You do want to crank your humidity up the last two days um, right around hatch time. Otherwise, the chicks will start to hatch, the membranes will dry out, and they'll get sealed in there and not be able to get all the way out. Now, this is where we're setting up how often it will turn our eggs. The turn interval is 90 minutes, so every hour and a half it's going to rotate our eggs. That's perfect. This is just for the alarm to go off if the temperature is off, it's too high or too low. Cooling. This is if you want to 
turn your incubator off for like 30 minutes or something to allow a cooling period. There's been some studies that show, well, hens get off the nest for a little bit every day and eat and the eggs cool down. So this incubator is equipped with a cooling feature. I don't usually turn it on. I found that the hatch rate goes down if I have that feature on. We're in Fahrenheit and everything's set up, so we're just gonna save that. So our temperature's still coming up. Right now we're only at 63.9 degrees. Our humidity is actually at 60%, and that's just because we're here in the south. So in this case, I will probably not add any water to my eggs unless I see the humidity drop below the 35% that I have it set at. It's coming down and it will come down as this incubator heats up because it's blowing warm air in there. So your humidity will come down. Once this um, incubator comes up to temperature, um, then I'll be able to truly assess what the humidity in there is. If I need to add a little water, I can. On this particular incubator, there's a tray up here at the top with a sponge that I can put the water in. So here's the incubator, and this is the rotation device in this large incubator. It tilts them from one side to the other. It kind of mimics the mama hen moving the eggs around um, and prevents deformities and stuff that you can have in your chicks if you don't rotate the eggs. All right, today's day four of incubation on our eggs. We're gonna go ahead and candle these and see if we see any development. So we have our little flashlight egg candler. We're gonna go ahead and start looking at these eggs. You can leave them in the tray or pick them up. You'll shine your light right on top of the egg. And you're looking for any vessels and it's hard to see on brown eggs if these were white eggs it would be easier to see um, i believe i see a little bit of vessel formation here on the top we're only at day four so it's a little difficult to see at this point you should see a clear uh, air cell at the top and i do so we're going to leave this one I see a clear air cell at the top, some very fine vesseling in this one. It's a little difficult to see again. Brown eggs are harder to candle early on. But the biggest thing at four days in is that you want to see that clear air sac and that there appears to be maybe some vessels, but um, potential development below. So this is day four. I don't expect to see a lot. I just don't want to see completely clear eggs. As long as I see a good air sac, we're leaving these. Actually at day four, I wouldn't suggest really culling any eggs just because it's difficult to truly determine this early on. But again, clear definition there with the air sac at the top. It's easier to learn on um, white leghorn eggs than these dark brown eggs. But this is um, day four and I would say just based on what I'm seeing here, we're looking like these are fertile eggs. I'm not going to go through all of them in here just because we're very early on. This one, I believe, was turned the wrong direction. Yep. There's the air cell at the top. So this was one that was difficult to distinguish which side was up because both sides were a little bit pointy. But um, it did look like some vessel formation down here on the other side. We're gonna put that the correct way. And we're gonna get these back into the incubator. Moving forward, you can just go through your tray like this. And as you get more development, you'll have darkening of the lower areas. So it'll be real easy to distinguish a clear egg from a fertile egg. 
most of these, to me, at this, this one might be clear, at this early stage are looking good. At four days in, the main thing you want to see is this definite air sac, I've said this repeatedly, and then some darkening below it. Uh, this one may be turned the wrong, no, it's not turned the wrong way. Oh, it's just a dirty egg. I don't see the air sac so well on that one. That one may not be fertile. But again, four days in, don't throw anything out. It's really, really early to candle eggs. We're just doing this for purposes of education. All right, we're at day eight incubating our eggs. We're gonna go ahead and get these candled um, because these are brown eggs. Like I had said before, the main thing you're looking for is to see a good air bubble at the top, which we do with this one. And you can see development down in the lower part of this egg. This is a fertile egg. On a white egg, you can see more veins uh, and vessels, but on a brown egg, you don't see a lot of that, but we do see darkening in our lower portion of the egg and a clear, defined air sac at the top. This one, you can actually see the little dark shadow of the chick developing in it, another good fertile egg. So rather than picking all of these up, I'm gonna do one more for demonstration. Then we're gonna go across all of our eggs, another fertile egg. So we've got good fertility on these, it looks like. Now, this is what I do generally. Just put my light on the top. This one is dirty, so it's hard to see. So I'm actually pick this one up. I believe this is a non-fertile egg. I don't see a good defined air sac on this one. I believe that's a blood ring. So it might have been fertile and not good at this point. Let's check this side. We're gonna leave this one to our next candling, but it'll probably come out at that point. All right. Well, I was gonna go across. Again, I don't see a good defined air sac on this one. The same thing. You can see a what looks like a blood ring on this one. So this one was fertile, but we've probably lost that. Set that aside, set that aside. These are the dirty eggs too, so that might have some impact on what we're doing, although I've had no problems hatching dirty eggs in the past. Okay, this is what you want to see. Defined air sac, darkening below. Same here. Same here. Here. Good. That's a good example there. Also. This, uh, Maybe is a maybe on that one. Good. Again, here's an example of one that is, this one looks generally clear. That's not a fertile egg. There's no air sac. That's not gonna develop. We're gonna go ahead and take that one out. Another clear egg, not fertile. Or maybe it was, I don't really see a blood ring, but that one does not look good. So I'm gonna just look back at these that I don't believe are good. Clear egg, this one doesn't look like it was ever fertile. This one is also a clear egg. I don't believe there's a little bit of an air sac, but I don't believe that's fertile. This one is the one that looked like it probably was and then died. You can't see the blood ring now, but I could see it when I first picked it up. 
All right, so we've got four that I'm confident are not fertile. Um, we're gonna go ahead and pull those out of our incubator and get these back in for another week and we'll candle again. All right guys, it's week two and we're gonna candle these eggs and see how they're developing. All right, we've got our little candling light and I'm gonna start just by going across the top of them. That's a good egg. It's got a nice air sac at the top. It's dark at the bottom. Same, 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 same. These are good eggs. This is what you're looking for. Good development at week two. Clear air sacs dark development below all right so all of these eggs look fertile let's just pull one out and get you a closer up look at it at this point you can now see definite chick development definite veins and vessel formation This is a good fertile egg developing exactly as it should be. Um, this air sac is, is a decent size. We're gonna probably bump up our humidity a little bit so we don't have as much evaporation just to keep this from uh, shrinking too much more. All right, and that's it on week two candling. That's exactly what you're looking for there. <laughs>